that it's likely that we will merge somehow or another with this sort of technology and it'll augment what we are now? Or do you think it will s replace us? Well, that's the scenario. The, 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 the merge scenario with AI is the one that seems like probably the best. Like For if, us. Yes. Like if you, if you can't beat it, join it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, so from a long-term existential standpoint, that's like the purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI because we have a bandwidth problem. You just can't communicate through your fingers. It's too slow. And where's Neuralink at right now? I think we'll have something interesting to announce in a few months. That's at least an order of magnitude better than anything else. Probably, I think better than probably anyone thinks is possible. How much can you talk about that right now? I don't want to jump the gun on that. Um, but what's like the ultimate, what's, what's the idea behind it? Like what are you trying to accomplish with it? Like what would you like, best case scenario? I think best case scenario, we effectively merge with AI uh, where we, AI serves as a tertiary cognition layer uh, where we've got the limbic system, um, kind of the, you know, the primitive brain essentially. You've got the cortex. So you're, you're currently in a symbiotic relationship. Your, your cortex and limbic system are in a symbiotic relationship. And generally people like their cortex and they like their limbic system. I haven't met anyone who wants to delete their limbic system or delete their cortex. Everybody seems to like both. And the cortex is mostly in service to the limbic system. People may think that, 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 they're, that the thinking part of themselves is in charge, but it's mostly their limbic system that's in charge. And the cortex is trying to make the limbic system happy. That's what most of that computing power is oriented towards. How can I make the limbic system happy? That's what it's trying to do. Now, if, if we do have a third layer, which is the AI extension of yourself, that is also symbiotic. Um, and there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself such that the AI doesn't de, de facto separate, then that could be a good outcome. That could be quite a positive outcome for the future. So instead of replacing us, it will radically change our capabilities. Yes. It will, it will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman cognition. Wow. Anyone who wants. This is not a matter of earning power because your earning power would be vastly greater after you do it. So it's just like anyone who wants can just do it in theory. That's the theory. And, and if that's the case, then, and let's say billions of people do it, then the outcome for humanity will be the sum of, of human will, the sum of billions of people's desire for the future. And but that, that billions could be a, of people with enhanced cognitive ability, radically yes, enhanced. Yes. And th which would be... Uh, it, how much different than people today? Like if you, if you had to explain it to a, a person who didn't really know, understand what you were saying, like how much different are you talking about? When you say radically improved, like what do you mean? You mean mind reading? It would be difficult, it would be difficult to, to really appreciate the, dif the difference. Um, you know, it's kind of like how much smarter are you with a phone or computer than without? It's, you're vastly smarter, actually. You know, you can answer any question. If you, if you connect to the Internet, you can answer any question pretty much instantly, any calculation. Uh, the, the, your phone's memory is essentially perfect. Uh, you can remember flawlessly. Your, your phone can remember videos, pictures, any, everything perfectly. Uh, that's the, that, your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. It, that phone is an extension of yourself. It's just that 
the the data rate, the rate at which of the communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself, that is your phone and computer, is slow. It's very slow. And and that that it's like a tiny straw of, of of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. And we need to make that tiny straw like a giant river, huge, high bandwidth interface. It's an interface problem, data rate problem. We solve the data rate problem, then I think I think we can hang on to human machine symbiosis through the long term. And then people may decide that they want to retain their biological self or not. I think they'll probably choose to retain their bi biological self. Versus some sort of Ray Kurzweil scenario where they download themselves into a computer? You will be essentially snapshotted into a computer at any time. If your biological self dies, you could just probably just upload into a new unit. Literally. Pass that whiskey. <laughs> This is, we're getting crazy over here. This is getting <laughs> ridiculous. Can Down the rabbit that? hole. Grab that sucker. Give me some of that. <laughs> this is too freaky. See, if I I've was been just thinking talking about this for a long time, by the way. I believe you have. If I was talking to one of my... Cheers, by the way. Cheers. Yeah, this is great whiskey. Thank you. <laughs>